right, the subscripts. When something is a subscript, that means it's below the, the baseline where you're writing. So that would be a subscript. And um, it says that P stands for partial pressure. And then if you see a capital A, that stands for alveolar. Um, so if you have P, capital A, there will be um, the pressure in the alveoli. Uh, P little a is pressure in the artery, or arterial pressure. Uh, v would be pressure in the vein. Um, O2 is oxygen, and CO2 is carbon dioxide. All right, so let me write some examples on the board. Can you guys see them over there? Mm. So these are considered our subscripts. Uh, P can be a capital P, small p. That doesn't change the meaning like it does with the A. Um, so what do you think this says? <laughs> Oxygen. Very good. So it's the pressure of alveolar oxygen. All right. What about this one? Yeah, pressure of arterial oxygen, or you could say pressure of oxygen in the artery. I be able to see this. Let's see how about over here. Can you see that from over there? Mm -hmm. um, so pressure of carbon dioxide in the vein. Um, so when we um, draw an arterial blood sample, we can measure the amount of oxygen that's in the blood and it, it becomes the partial pressure that's dissolved in the blood. So that's the P, the big deal with the P. Okay. And lights off to see this a little bit better. Right. Then there's some more terms. Um, there's V's and there's Q's, and there's supposed to be a dot over each one, and I still to this day can't figure out how to get the dots above the letters. So they kind of float all over the place. Like this one, the dot ended up where it's supposed to be. Um, there's a dot here that's supposed to be up here. So on your notes, if you could add a dot above the V, the two V's and above the Q's. And what does it mean? Um, for the V dot, it's ventilation or production of a gas. So V, v dot O2, we um, also use that to describe consumption of oxygen. So when, when we're breathing in, if we could measure the amount of oxygen that our body absorbs over a minute, it would be called the, um, oxygen consumption, and that would be abbreviated V dot O2. So if you want to put in parentheses, also called consumption of O2. For the second one? Yes. Consumption of O2, V dot O2. And then the next one is a Q. And anytime you see Q, it's talking about blood flow. So. If it's a Q for cardiac output, or just a Q in general for blood flow. And then QC is flow of blood in the capillaries. So when blood comes in contact with the alveolus, uh, there is an exchange of gases. Some gases will leave the blood and go into the alveolus. Um, some gases will leave the alveolus and go into the blood. And this is called diffusion, when the gases are moving from one place to another. And the, the amount of diffusion will be different for different gases. And it tells you that it depends on the molecular weight of the gas. So, um, 
The lighter the gas, the easier it can diffuse from one place to another. Partial pressure of the gas. So the more um, gas molecules you have in one area and less in another area, then it's going to want to move to the area where there's less gas molecules. So um, the partial pressure of the gas, if there's a lot in one area, a small amount in another area, it'll diffuse from um, high concentration to low concentration. And then the third one is the solubility of the gas into a liquid. And all gases have solubility constants where um, they see, they put some, they bubble it through a solution, and they see how much of the gas will dissolve in the solution, and they come up with this solubility constant. Inversely proportional to the square root of its gram molecular weight. That's a mouthful. <laughs> but I like what comes after the semicolon. A lighter gas will have a faster diffusion rate. So we already mentioned it. That's saying the same thing as diffusion depends on the molecular weight. Um, but for all of that, if you just underline lighter gas equals faster diffusion rate, that's good enough. Henry's law says gas diffusion is directly proportional to the gas partial pressure. The greater the pressure, the greater the diffusion. We already mentioned that too. Carbon dioxide diffuses 20 times faster than oxygen across the alveolar capillary membrane because of its much greater solubility. What you need to remember is that carbon dioxide diffuses faster than oxygen, and I'll explain it. So maybe if you just underline that. Carbon dioxide diffuses 20 times faster than oxygen. All right, and then let me, let me give you an example. Um, let's say somebody was in a car accident and the steering wheel crushed their, the ribs on their right chest and the ribs poke the lung and the lung deflates and of course there's a pneumothorax, all the air is um, compressing that lung on the right. So the left lung is working fine. So this person gets to the emergency department and you draw an arterial blood gas on that person. Now they have one lung working and one lung not working. So you would think um, both oxygen and carbon dioxide levels would be affected. But when you draw the arterial blood, you find out that the oxygen level is low, but carbon dioxide level is still okay. So how can you explain the body getting rid of the carbon dioxide when one lung is collapsed? And that's the answer, is that carbon dioxide is a much more diffusible gas. So the buildup of carbon dioxide in the blood, when it does get to the left lung, it easily um, leaves the blood, goes into the alveolus, and then it gets exhaled. But I thought that was oxygen. That oxygen did that. Oxygen diffuses better than carbon dioxide? Mm -hmm. Well, think differently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so carbon dioxide level will be normal, and the O2 level will be low. And then here's another question. If P capital A O2 equals 100 millimeters mercury, I'll repeat it. If P capital A O2 
equals 100 millimeters of mercury, and P little a O2 equals 60 millimeters of mercury. P little a O2 equals 60 millimeters of mercury. Which way will O2 diffuse? Um, so P capital A O2, what does that represent? Pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. And P little a O2, what does that represent? Pressure of oxygen in the artery. So which way will oxygen move? Will it go from the artery into the alveolus or from the alveolus into the artery? From the alveolus into the artery. Because? So the gas will move from higher pressure to lower pressure. And this shows a picture of what we just talked about. showing a capillary and this is showing an alveolus and we talked about the alveolar capillary membrane where normally it's very thin so it's real easy for gases to go from the alveolus into the capillary and that's what happens with oxygen because as blood is coming towards the alveolus the body already used up a lot of the oxygen that was in there so it comes across the alveolus and the oxygen level is really low. Usually it's about 40 millimeters mercury. Does it say it on here? Maybe on the next one coming in. Um, and then oxygen is high in the alveolus. So when you have a high partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolus and a lower partial pressure in the blood, <coughs> oxygen is going to move from the alveolus and go into the blood. It will diffuse into the blood. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, carbon dioxide is produced by the cells in the body. It's normal metabolism. And carbon dioxide <coughs> needs to be um, rid of. So what happens is it travels back to the lungs. And when, it's in, when the blood is in the contact with the alveolus, carbon dioxide is going to move from its high partial pressure in the blood to a lower partial pressure in the alveoli. So if you look around on the picture, it's mentioning um, solubility, it's mentioning diffusion, and then we've got P1, P2 for partial pressures. This is the picture that shows normal partial pressures. So in the alveolus, we have a partial pressure of oxygen that's 100 millimeters of mercury. <coughs> and the venous blood coming towards the alveolus as a partial pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. So it makes sense that the oxygen is going to diffuse from this high pressure into to the low pressure, therefore the oxygen moves into the blood. And look at carbon dioxide in the vein, 46 millimeters of mercury. It comes in contact with the velus that has 40 millimeters of mercury. So the higher concentration will diffuse and now it's 40 millimeters of mercury in the arterial blood. And now we need to talk a little bit more about gases that are in the alveoli. So to calculate the different gases in the alveoli, first look at the equation that follows and describe the different gases in the alveoli and the pressures they exert. And then second, notice that all of the gases will add up to the atmospheric pressure of 760 millimeters mercury at sea level. So it says, alveolar gases are nitrogen, water vapor, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So that's what exists in the alveoli. And then looking at the partial pressures, well first they all add up to 760 millimeters of mercury 
And does that number sound familiar? Does the partial pressure at um, sea level, um, the atmospheric pressure at sea level? Um, the pressure of nitrogen is 573 millimeters mercury. Water vapor, 47 millimeters mercury. Oxygen, 100 millimeters mercury. And carbon dioxide, 40 millimeters of mercury. Then it says, let's play with some different numbers. A patient with long-term lung disease has a high carbon dioxide level in the blood and in the MBOF. The carbon dioxide level is 65 millimeters mercury. Plug 65 millimeters mercury into the equation above for the carbon dioxide. But remember, the total pressure of all the alveolar gases has to be 760 millimeters mercury. All right, so if you're changing the amount of carbon dioxide, we had 40, we're going to change that to 65. Well, all of these numbers still have to add up to 760. Well, nitrogen does not change. Do you want to put a little note above it or something? Yeah. So nitrogen does not change. Water vapor does not change, so put a little note about that. Water vapor does not change. So if carbon dioxide goes up, what happens to the oxygen level? It goes down. It goes down. So the resultant PO2, well, if this went up by 25, then the PO2 has to go down by 25. Do you know what to put for your answer at the bottom? What is the resultant uh, PO2? Yeah, 75 millimeters mercury. Everybody's got that? Mm -hmm. Explore this. Hold your breath for a minute or just hypoventilate meaning shallow, slow breaths. What will happen to the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood? So if you're not having a normal respiratory rate, a normal tidal volume, um, and you hold your breath, your cells in your body are still producing carbon dioxide, but you're not exhaling the carbon dioxide. What do you think would happen to the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood? It's going to increase. You're not getting rid of it. You're not exhaling it like normal. So it, it tends to stay in the blood. So to answer the question, what will happen to the amount of carbon dioxide in your blood? It will increase. What will happen to the carbon dioxide in the alveoli? Well, if we're not blowing it out, it's going to accumulate in the alveoli. So the answer to that question is it will increase. All right, what would happen to the level of oxygen? It's going to decrease. So the CO2 is going to displace it. And the, the pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli varies inversely with the level, level of alveolar ventilation. So that means the more you breathe, the less it is, or the less you breathe, the more it is. So I, I'll give you some notes to write down so that makes sense. All right, so we're going to write two different things. Number one, high ventilation, high ventilation. And then in parentheses, put RR and VT for respiratory rate and tidal volume. So high ventilation would be high respiratory rate, high tidal volume. Comma, 
and write low um, PaCO2. So it would be P for pressure, capital A for alveolar, and then CO2 for carbon dioxide. You would have a low pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar. So high ventilation, you breathe a lot, you get rid of your carbon dioxide, so there's going to be very little carbon dioxide left in your alveoli. So that's what you just wrote. Then write low ventilation. Do you want to write decreased RR, decreased VT after that, just for clarification? So low ventilation would be a slow respiratory rate. It would be a small tidal volume. That's all low ventilation. And then put comma, high PaCO2. And then it's going to be a capital A. High pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar. For the high ventilation, you would have higher respiratory rate and high tidal volume. And or. Whenever you increase ventilation, it could be just breathing faster, or it could be breathing with bigger tidal volumes, or it could be both. All right, so, and then number two, write this down. Uh, write the word hypoventilate, H-Y-P-O, ventilate, hypoventilate. Um, P-A-C-O-2, here's a little a. P, little a, CO2, arrow up, means that it increases. PaCO2 increases, and PaO2 decreases. Put the little a, PaO2 decreases. The pressure of oxygen in arterial blood decreases. So first one, oh, okay. Hypoventilate. PaCO2 increases and PaO2 decreases. Those are both little a's. Both what? Little. Both are little a's. Okay. Yeah. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. If you're not breathing, your oxygen level goes down, you're not getting first supply of oxygen into your blood, and carbon dioxide builds up. Builds up. All right, and then write hyperventilate, H-Y-P-E-R. Hyperventilate. The PaCO2, so it's going to be a little a. PaCO2, the pressure of carbon dioxide in the artery, decreases. So put arrow down. PaCO2 with an arrow down. And PaO2 with an arrow up. And that means the pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood increases. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you breathe a lot, you're blowing off extra carbon dioxide, and you're getting in more oxygen, because you're breathing a lot more, so you're going to have a lot more oxygen entering your blood. So oxygen level goes up, carbon dioxide, you blew it all out, and that'll go down in the blood levels. A healthy 30-year-old woman was brought to the emergency room in a comatose state, <coughs> pardon me, uh, breathing very shallowly. The family stated that she had taken an excess number of sleeping pills. Arterial blood was obtained while she was breathing room air, uh, 21% and revealed a PaO2 of 55 millimeters of mercury and a PaCO2 of 70 millimeters of mercury. Her high PaCO2 is explained by her hypoventilation. She cannot remove carbon dioxide from her lungs as rapidly as it diffuses in from the capillary blood. But why is her PaO2 reduced? Is that giving you the answer down there? Yeah. So she shallow breathing. Um, okay, the shallow breathing will cause um, what to happen in the LBI. We know that um, CO2 will increase. Mm -hmm. Does that yes. displace oxygen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So oxygen is displaced by the carbon dioxide. And a fresh supply of O2 isn't entering the lungs. A fresh supply of O2 or oxygen isn't entering the lungs. And then what's answered on the slide, it says the high pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli from hypoventilation displaces the pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. If the alveolar oxygen is low, then the amount of oxygen available to diffuse into the blood will also be low. So when you draw arterial blood, you're gonna find that the level is low. So they're not breathing very much, low oxygen level. They're not getting a fresh supply of it into the lungs, plus the carbon dioxide is displacing what's there. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so. Let me give you the alveolar air equation. You already have this from your equipment class, right? So this will just be a review. No. Oh. oh, okay. So it's not deep. All right. So we can figure out the P capital A O2, the pressure of oxygen in the alveoli, and we can use a formula to figure it out. So P, capital AO2, pressure of oxygen in the alveolar. So if you're asked, what is the purpose of the alveolar air equation? Is to figure out the amount of oxygen that's in the alveolar. All right. When you're doing this equation, um, remember to do what's in the brackets first before you subtract anything. So FiO2, is it turned in the paper? No, it's not working down. The fraction of inspired oxygen, have you had that yet? FiO2? Not really? I'll to explain it. Just a little bit? Yeah. All right, so in the atmosphere, when we're breathing in, there's several gases in the atmosphere. And one of those gases is oxygen, obviously. And the amount of the gas in the atmosphere is about 21%. It's 0 0.2095, so you say 21%. And when you're writing that as a fraction of all the gases in the atmosphere, you write 0.21. And if you're talking about it in percentage instead of in decimal form, so instead of saying the fraction of inspired oxygen, what is the percentage of oxygen, you would say 21%. That, that all that already? Yeah, we had that. All right. And when you're... In the hospital, patients are not always breathing just room air. They could be placed on an oxygen mask or they're on the ventilator. So they'll be delivering, you will be delivering different concentrations of oxygen. So if it's 35%, let's say, and you plug that 35% into the equation, you're going to put it in as a decimal, so 0.35, or whatever it is. What if it was 100%? What would you put for 100%? Guess again. One. 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 Yeah. So 1.0 or 1. All right. And then you have your barometric pressure, and you subtract your water vapor pressure from that. So barometric pressure. Should I wait for you to write it in since it's not listed here? <laughs> so barometric pressure, you subtract the water vapor pressure. That's in the alveoli. Um, the pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood is almost the same as what it is in the alveoli, but we have to divide by 0.8, the respiratory quotient. And I'll ex that's explained here. So the, the point eight, why can't we just say, oh, the carbon dioxide that's in the blood is the same amount of carbon dioxide in the alveolus 
And we talked about the pressure. I said it's like 46 in the venous blood, and it's 40 in the alveolus. Why can't we just put the number in the alveolus? Well, we have to take into consideration the amount of um, oxygen being taken into the blood and the amount of carbon dioxide coming back into the alveolus. And the volume of those two make a difference. So, normally 250 mLs of O2 is consumed by the body and 200 mLs of CO2 is excreted by the body. And that's when you divide the two, you come up with 0.8. Do you have to memorize the consumption and production of CO2? No, not at this point. Um, but if you're curious and you say, okay, I'm going to plug into this equation, but what the heck is 0.8? Now you know. Um, but you're not going to, in my class, I don't think Scott's going to expect you to explain the point A, but it does have to do with the amount of oxygen being consumed and the CO2 being produced, and that becomes a factor as far as what exists in the alveolus. Alright, so let me give you some numbers to plug in. If you have a calculator on your phone, there's a calculator mm -hmm. to plug in. Mm -hmm. So the top number is the barometric pressure at 760 millimeters of mercury. Uh, the next number is the FiO2, and it's 0.6. So that's how you'll put it into the equation, that's 0.6. Um, the pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood is 40 millimeters of mercury. So the PaCO2, 40 millimeters of mercury. All right, so you've got some numbers, and I'll give you a minute to plug into the equation. You always use 47 millimeters of mercury for water vapor in the alveoli, and that's not going to change. So that number stays the same. 377? 47? 37.8. 37.8? 377.8. Oh, you already got the answer? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did everybody else get that? You got something else? Yeah. Can we put in 0.6 for FiO2? 0.6. You'll get the same answer. Um, so maybe it's the order that you did it. So first you'll do 760 minus 47. Mm -hmm. 713. 713. Then you multiply by FiO2. 0.6. 0 .6. 0 .6. Mm -hmm. And just hold that number for a minute because you don't do anything until you divide the CO2 by 0.8. Oh, okay. So 40 divided by 0.8, what does that come out to be, 50? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's 50. Now you're ready to subtract those two numbers. Did you get it? Okay. Thank you. 
You're hungry? You ready to go eat? Well, we're just about finished. I'm um, trying to think where you can get some practice problems on this. So I'll, I'll have to post some. You need to well. The answer is in millimeters of mercury. Yeah, so if you're breathing 60% oxygen, then the amount of oxygen in your alveolus will be 378 millimeters of mercury. That's a lot more than normal. Do you remember what we said normal was? No? 100? Oh. Okay, so that's it for today. There aren't going to be any students at 1230. You guys made your test, so you probably don't want to bring it to the